Hello friends, this video on neat reproduction is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 24. Double fertilization leading to initiation of endosperm in angiosperms require fusion of one polar nucleus and the second male gamete only, fusion of two polar nuclei and the second male gamete, fusion of four or more polar nuclei and the second male gamete only, all of the above kinds of fusion in different angiosperms. Now, what do we mean by double fertilization? Why do we say that double fertilization takes place in case of angiosperms? Now, in angiosperms, two fertilizations take place. So, here what happens? Two male gametes enter into the cytoplasm of synergid. So, there are two male gametes. So, now these two male gametes undergo two different fertilization with two different female gametes. Like here what happens is there is one fertilization called syngamy where one male gamete fuses with the egg cell. So, here egg cell is the female gamete and the pollen is the male gamete. So, this is one fertilization. What happens to the other male gamete? The other male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei and this is known as triple fusion. Why triple fusion? Because three nuclei are involved. One is male gamete and two polar nuclei. So that is triple fusion. So syngamy and triple fusion, both of these are fertilization. So basically two fertilizations are taking place and that is why it is called double fertilization. Now what is the result of syngamy? So male gamete fuses with egg cell to give a zygote, the single celled zygote, which later develops to form the embryo. And what is the result of triple fusion? Male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei to form the primary endosperm cell and this primary endosperm cell later develops to form the endosperm. So this is double fertilization in case of angiosperms. So here double fertilization leading to initiation of endosperm. So for endosperm to be initiated, what do you need? The fusion should happen between a male gamete and the polar nuclei. So obviously, which would be our right option? Option B is the right option. Fusion between polar nuclei and the second male gamete. And this fusion is known as triple fusion. Question number 25. Flowers showing ornithophily show few characteristic like blue flowers with nectaries at base of corolla, red sweet scented flower with nectaries, bright red flower with thick inflorescence, white flowers with fragrance. Now, what is ornithophily? So ornithophily is basically pollination by birds. Now the flowers need to have something that should attract birds so that the birds can come and help in the process of pollination. So what are the what are some of the characteristics of ornithophilic flowers? They are large and stout. So large flowers are more noticeable, large and also with bright colors. So large stout with bright colors, they are scentless because smell doesn't really matter in this case for the birds. However, they have abundant nectars and edible parts so that the birds come to these flowers uh, in search of food so that they have a lot of things to eat. Tubular or funnel shaped corollas because the shape of the petals also attract the birds. So now if we look at the given options, the first option appears to be most appropriate because here you have blue flowers that is bright colored flowers with nectaries at base of the corolla that is lot of uh, nectar at the base of the petals. So this helps the birds. So the birds will come in search of nectar looking at the bright color of the flowers. Question number 26. How many pollen grains will be formed after meiotic division in 10 microspore mother cells? So what is microspore mother cell? Microspore mother cell is a diploid cell and one microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis or meiotic division to form four haploid microspores and these four haploid microspores they form four haploid pollen grains so basically one microspore mother cell forms four pollen grains after mitotic division so now in the question it asks that there are 10 microspore mother cells so therefore 10 microspore mother cell will form how many pollen grains 10 into 4 pollen grains that is this would form 40 pollen grains. So C is the right option. Question number 27. 
number of meiotic divisions required to produce 200 by 400 seeds of P would be. So how do we know that how many mitotic divisions will be needed to produce these many seeds? Okay, so first let us understand it in this way. That how many gametes do you need to produce 200 seeds of P? So to produce 200 seeds, what do you need? So for seeds to form, fertilization has to take place because seed, what is seed? The ovule after fertilization becomes the seed. So for seed to uh, have, so in order to have the seed, fertilization has to happen. So for 200 seeds, how many male and female gametes do you need for fertilization? So one seed will be formed after fertilization of one male gamete and one female gamete. So for 200 seeds, you need 200 male gametes and you need 200 female gametes, right? So how many mitotes? How many uh, meiotic divisions do you need to produce 200 male gametes and again to produce 200 female gametes? Now, we know that one meiotic division or one meiosis, one meiotic division produces one egg cell. That is one haploid egg cell. Why? Because we have learned that inside the embryo sac you have one megaspore mother cell. One megaspore mother cell after meiosis produces four megaspores but out of them three degenerates. So only one functional megaspore is left. So And one me functional megaspore gives rise to one cell. Gives rise to one egg cell basically. So one meiotic division gives rise to one egg cell. So egg cell is nothing but the female gamete. And what about the male gamete? So for male gamete, one meiotic division of the microspore mother cell gives rise to four haploid microspores and those four haploid microspores gives rise to four pollen grains. So these pollen grains are the male gametes. Right? So this is our basic calculation that is uh, you need for getting one female gamete, you need one my meiotic division. For getting four male gametes, you need one meiotic division. Now, let us get back to this question. So, how many meiotic divisions will you need to get 200 male gametes? So, for four male gametes, you need one meiotic division. So, for 200 male gametes, you would need 200 by, by four divisions. These many divisions will be needed. Similarly, to get 200 female gametes, you would need 200 divisions because for one female gamete, you need one meiotic division. So that means for this, 200 by 4 would be 50 divisions plus this would be 200 divisions. So total, in order to get 200 seeds, you need 50 plus 200, that is 250 meiotic divisions. So these many divisions are needed. In a similar way, you can calculate how many divisions do you need to get 400 seeds. So for 400 seeds, you need 400 male gametes plus 400 female gametes. So how many divisions you ne need to get 400 male gametes? 400 divided by 4, that is 100 divisions. And for female gametes, you would need 400 divisions. So this would be 100 plus 400 division. So total you would need 500 division. So what would be your answer? To get 200 by 400 seeds, you need 250 by 500 division. So 250 by 500, that is option D. Question number 28. Point out the odd one. Nucellus, embryo sac, micropyle and pollen grain. So all the options A, B and C, they are all parts of ovule or they are, we can say that they are part of the female reproductive part, right? Whereas if you look at pollen grain, what is it? It is the male gametophyte. So pollen grain is the odd man out. Question number 29. Nucellus embryo is amphimictic haploid, amphimictic diploid, apomictic haploid or apomictic diploid. So let us first understand what is nucellus embryo. What is nucellus? So nucellus is a diploid tissue which is the central part of the ovule containing the embryo sac. So basically this region is nucellus. It is diploid 
and this region contains the embryo sac so you see the green colored thing the sac like structure is the embryo sac so it contains the embryo sac now what do we mean by nucellus embryo nucellus embryo means embryo which is developed from the tissues of nucellus of an unfertilized egg so embryo developed from nucellus is nucellus embryo now what is apomixis so apomixis is an alternative to sexual reproduction which doesn't include meiosis and fertilization right so in this case we can say that this is nucellus embryo is apomictic diploid because as i said nucellus is a diploid tissue so from this diploid tissue the embryo will be formed so of course it is diploid and if it is apomixis or not yes because apomixis is an alternative to sexual reproduction so here also in case of for developing embryo from nucellus no sexual no fertilization or meiosis is involved so it is apomixis so it is a combination of diploid and apomixis that is apomictic diploid thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you